Our walk becomes labored. Our heart, heavy. There's something about the unknown which seems to weaken us. It drains our patience and blurs our focus. Yet, in the middle of everything stands a faithful God. A God who's not swayed by the struggle, who isn't moved by the winds of chaos. A God who remains faithful even when our faith is fragile. It seems more difficult than ever to not worry about tomorrow. Yet that's exactly what God has asked us to do. For when we cast our burdens on Him, the troubles of the moment begin to fade. When we trust the plans He has for us, our fear begins to subside. When we fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, our focus becomes consumed by clarity. Yes, we are in the midst of uncertainty, but we can be certain of one thing. God is faithful. And that is more than enough for tomorrow. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Y'all happy to be in church? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, I'm glad you guys are here. How many of y'all remember back uh, at the end of January when we um, finished our 21 days of prayer and fasting, um, we had asked everybody to make a uh, what? Vision list. Okay. And that meant for you to write down everything, okay, that you would like to see to come to pass this year in 2021, okay? This is my vision list right here, okay? And I actually made this and put it right above my computer in my office to keep it before me all the time. Why? Because when I ask God to do something, I'm expecting Him to do it, amen? And I know that, you know, like all of y'all, it's easy to get distracted. It's easy to forget what you ask God, okay? It's easy for you to get focused on how you can make this list happen, and we lose the vision of what God wants for us. The reason why I asked everybody to do that, and we're going to do it again in 2022, is because you need to see God's faithfulness. His faithfulness empowers you to continue to serve Him with joy. It, it continue to serve Him with expectation that He's going to do what He said He's going to do. We live in a world that we, we, we really are, if we're not careful, we're letting these outside voices dictate how we live, how we buy, how we purchase, how we do things, okay? I'm going to say this probably a few times in this service today, but faith in God is where God wants us to live, is in that confident expectation that He's going to meet our need. He does not want us to depend on our credit score to meet our need. I'm going to say that again, okay? Because <clears throat> it's to me too. God and His kingdom, when you got saved, you changed how you did business in this world. We no longer do business based on our credit score and how good our credit is. We do business based on our faith in God and Him supplying what we need. That means when we have a need, we don't go to the bank. We go to the Creator. When we have a sickness, we don't just run to the hospital. We run to the healer. This is why we have to in Romans 12 where he talks about we need to renew our mind with the Word of God. We don't need to be conformed to the world anymore because they have a way they do it. And I'm not saying all the ways they do it is terrible. It's not. I'm not saying that. Because there's an element of the kingdom of God even working through the world, okay? I mean, they do use some of the principles in the Bible to actually run the system. But the reality is that the governments of the world want to make you and I slaves of theirs. Did you know that all the governments of the world, they want us to become slaves? Mm -hmm. Not because you're white, not because you're black, not because you're brown. It's because they want more power. And a lot of their policies and a lot of their things, even as we see the end of the age coming, you're noticing, 
Okay, it's couched with some soft tones, but I can promise you there's an ulterior motive behind that. And it's to get us in submission to them. It was that way in Jesus' day. It's that way, you know, in, in, back in Moses' day. I'm telling you, when government has power, they don't know what to do with it. And when you take God out of that, it even gets worse. So as we approach the last days, you need to know that the government as a whole has not got your best interest in mind. And you need to have an ear to hear what's going on, but you need to have a, a total focus on what God's saying. Amen? Because what He's saying will get you away from some of the negativity and stuff that's going on in the world because it's chaos out there. Amen? Glory to God. But anyway, we want you guys to, to really, if you haven't been or you, you kind of dropped the ball there, get your vision list back out and begin to thank God. I've already seen some things come to pass in my life. Amen? I've seen some things happen on this list and are happening, and, I, and I'm excited about it. We've got a few more months, but I'm believing that, hey, look, it's going gonna, it's gonna to wrap it on up. Amen? God is moving on the land, and He wants to move in me and you. Amen? He don't want us to be moved by what's going on in this world because there's a lot of crazy stuff going on. But God, let me tell you something. We win. We're winners. We're winners today. We're winners tomorrow. We're winners, we're winners all the time. And if we'll keep our mind focused on Jesus, I promise you, we'll walk through the fires of life and we won't be burnt. Amen? We'll be, we'll be right on top. We'll be just like the children of Israel back in the day, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, hallelujah, went into the fiery furnace and came out and changed the government. God used a fire that was meant to bring harm but literally changed a whole nation to serve Him. Is that the same God that we serve? Yes. So if He took a corrupt nation and a corrupt government in that day and turned it around in one swift minute, could He not do it today? Absolutely He can. That's why we just need to continue to focus on Him. Amen? God's got this. I'm telling you. See, the enemy thinks he's got everything under control. He thinks, man, that he's, he's ruling and reigning and man, he's controlling and he's doing all this stuff. And sadly, I mean, it is affecting a lot of Christians. And that's why my heart has been heavy to really get into what I'm talking about, living in faith, you know, uh, living by faith in fearful times. Because I feel like that our, our faith is being challenged. And if you ain't really strong in faith, you're going to begin to buckle a little bit. And we don't, I don't want that, okay? So I've even got you guys a little bit of homework. Hallelujah. We come to church, amen. We're gonna, I, I love you. I care about you. And if all you do is come in here and hear what i got to say and you leave, you ain't going to retain it. You ain't. I want you to leave here and go do it. So I'm going to give you some tools to go do it. And that's up to you. Amen? You can, you can either do it or you can lose it. All right? I promise you, if you'll do what I'm saying today, and what I believe the Spirit of God is saying, it will change your life. Amen? So last week, we started a, a little message, you know, series. I'm not really calling it a series. I'm just, I'm just, gonna, I'm just showing up and preaching, okay? I'm not doing a series. All right? I'm going to show up, and I'm going to speak on living by faith in fearful times. Part 1, part 2, part 3, part 50, okay? I'm, not, I'm, just, I'm telling you, I spend all week seeking God, and I'm just coming to give you what I believe God has for us, amen? And it's good, amen? But, but last week we talked about we're living in times of great fear across the land and even in the church. You know that fear has seeped into the church? Who do you think's behind fear? In the devil. Would that be a real... Would that be a consensus among all of us? That the devil's behind the fear. You know, John 10, 10 says this. It says, the thief, the devil comes only in order to do what? Steal, kill, Steal, kill and destroy. I, Jesus, came that they may have and enjoy life and have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. So see, the devil comes to do one thing and Jesus comes to do one thing. See, there's two different lords that are working on the earth today. Satan is the God of this world. That's why it's in a mess. That's why when you hear somebody say God's in control, we need to be more specific in that. What is he in control over? Because if God's in control of the earth, whoa, he must have took his eyes off the, the, the end there, you know, the prize. Because this place is really jacked up. It's messed up. There's a lot of bad things going on, Amen. But no, God is in control of the things we allow Him to be in control with, okay? And the devil has a short lease on this earth. And that time is running out when, when He will be removed. And then Jesus will come and rule and reign and have complete takeover of the world. It will be restored and brought like it was before Adam and Eve sinned. 
But right now, we have two lords working, and we need to know which one we're going to actually walk with. And we need to be able to identify when one's working in our life. If anything in your life is being stolen, if you see any death in your life, amen, you see things in your life, just know that that's not from God because Jesus come to give us life and give it to us more abundantly. 2 Timothy 1.7 says this, For God has not given us a spirit of what? So he don't give fear away, right? You're not going to go to God and then leave his presence scared to death. You're not going to go to God and in your prayer closet, you're going to see, uh, you know, Freddy Krueger come walking out going, I am God. I'm here to tell you. No, you ain't going to see no scary stuff going on. I mean, it's all going to be, it's going to be good. Amen. He don't give us a spirit of fear and intimidate, but what does he give us? He gives us a spirit of power, of love, and whoa. Now that is almost like a cuss word to most people, right? Whether you're a Christian or not. Self-discipline? Whoa. You mind your own business, okay? I mean, I, I got this under control. You ain't got to be looking at me. Maybe you don't like what you see. That's okay. That's all right. I'll work on it. Self-discipline is something that we need, amen? Hallelujah. And he will give that to us. How many of y'all could use a little self-discipline? We all could, amen? It wouldn't hurt us. Have you ever been afraid of something? No, nah, man, I ain't afraid of nothing, man. I'll tell you what, I'll whip anybody. Well, you may not be afraid to, to fight, okay? I'm not saying that. You may be tough, and you may be, you know, you could fight anybody, anytime, anywhere. But you may be afraid that you're going to lose your wife. You might be afraid you're going to lose your job. There's fears that come on us. There's fears all around us. So I can promise you, my friend, <laughs> We've all faced it. Amen? They're here. They're not going nowhere. They're all around us. The question is, are we going to position ourselves that when they do come, that we overcome them and they don't overcome us? I mean, I was dreaming. I had a dream. Did anybody else dream? You know I, mean? <laughs> I dream, okay? Some dreams you want to share. Some dreams you <laughs> want to delete, okay? Well, as I was in this dream... Um, it was almost like the enemy was really pressing me with some things about my future. And he was basically, you know, painting a picture of doom and gloom on my job. He was painting a picture of doom and gloom in certain areas of my life. And he was, he was putting all of these scenarios in my mind that what if this happened? What if that happened? And at the time, it seemed real. And I was sitting here going, wow, man. I've got 30 plus years in this company. What if this happens? You know what I'm saying? I'm kind of debating on these things going on in my head, Okay. Only to wake up and realize it was just a dream. And that I have authority over him. He don't have authority over me. And if I am not willing to exercise my authority over him, no matter how I feel, or no matter how the situation looks, he will run over me. He will run over you. That's a fact, Jack, okay? He don't play fair. Y'all know that, right? The devil don't say, hey, look, I tell you what, let's cut a deal. Katie, I'll leave you alone if you leave me alone. And Katie says, wow, I like that deal. So Katie walks off. And as soon as she turns her back, he's there to stab her. He tears up the clause or the contract. Okay? The devil does not play fair. Matter of fact, when you're down, he wants you down even further. When you're hurting, he wants you hurting more. That's why you need a church family. You need people. That's why we need to text one another. Love on one another. I mean, if somebody comes to your mind, pray for them. Somebody comes to your heart, text them. That simple little, hey, I'm praying for you. It may mean a lot. Amen? I mean, I use text in church not to get people to come to church. I don't use text in church to get you to come to this building. I like to use text in church to encourage you to be able to win out there. I want to love on you. So when I text you, that's me texting y'all. Y'all do know that, right? So you could respond. <laughs> Just kidding. Now, I, I want you to be encouraged. Because I know there's, there's voices that do come to your head and try to get you to quit and give up. Amen? Some fears are light, but then there is some that will really bring you to your knees. Some fears don't really, don't really affect you that much. But then there's some fears that you go, oh my God, how do I handle this? And frantically, you're trying to figure out how you can fix this or make, this, make it change for the good. And in that moment is when we should be preparing for that moment, instead of reacting to that moment. 
Because sometimes when you react to things, you will do just about anything to try to remove that which is hurting you at that moment, okay? And we want to make sure we do it the way God has for us to do it. Should we live in fear? Is that a good thing to do, is just live in fear and be scared all the time? Is there ever a time in our life that we should live afraid? Is there ever a good time to fear? You know, you hear some people say, you know, a little fear is kind of good for you. Uh, you have bumped your head. There is no fear that's good for me or you, okay? Now, when you talk about fear in a sense of reverential fear to God, well, yeah, that's a good, that's a good healthy fear. I mean, I'm talking about you shouldn't be afraid of nothing, ever. And I'm telling you, if we'll get full of Him, we won't be afraid of anything out there. Amen? The devil always wants to bring the worst case scenarios to our mind about things in our lives. Have you ever noticed that? He tries to bring the worst case scenarios, maybe with your kids, maybe with your job. Your marriage, relationship, health, money. I mean, worst case scenarios. I mean, you have an ache in your belly. And you have a thought, man, I got stomach cancer. And if you Google it, you will. I promise you. Stage six, <laughs> according to Google. Amen? But it brings thoughts to us, you know, about our future. You're not going to amount to nothing. You're not going to be able to do it. You're not going to be able to go through this. You know, you're not going to be able to, you know, do whatever. Amen? So I brought some pictures today I want to show you guys. Uh, because what is fear? Fear is false evidence appearing real. False evidence appearing real. That, that's what fear is, okay? Now, I know if you look it up in the dictionary, don't be getting technical with me, okay? You can find out, you know what I'm saying. But the reality is, is most of the time, fear is a false evidence. that it, it, Does it not appear real sometimes? I mean, it feels real, okay? Well, the next picture I want you to show you uh, uh, of a man, you know, in a shadow, okay? Now, obviously, he's, he's being extreme like I would, okay? But this is a shadow of whatever. I guess a monster. I don't know. I, I don't know how they did that, okay? But the picture is, is he's real. This is not but this is a picture of what people do, maybe not out in public, but they will let things that are not real drive their lives and make them react. Whenever you see, there's nobody. Have you ever been hurt by a shadow? Has anybody's shadow ever walked by you and you, you fell to the ground? No, this is a shadow, okay? It looks real, but it's a shadow. It can't do nothing to you. And that's what the enemy constantly tries to do to me and you all the time. He likes to create this falseness, the hoping that you're going to yield to it, like he's yielding to that shadow. Now, really, if he would just look at it and go, no, you ain't got nothing on me, and just walk away. He's good, he's good to go. But because he's letting that shadow affect him, just like we let fear affect us sometimes, this is what happens. Now, I want to show you this next picture and see if y'all can kind of see how ridiculous this is. Does everybody see that? I don't think... This is where Photoshop really comes in handy. Because that, that elephant's not standing on that chair. Y'all agree? Okay? But the picture is, look at this little bitty mouse. All right? That represents fear. And this huge elephant that could do what to this mouse if he wanted to? Crush it like a little cockroach. Okay? But because he's letting fear dominate him, he's lost sight of who he is. Because he's so focused on what this is. And the Bible tells us at the end of days when we look down at the devil, we're going to be, Isaiah tells us this, he says, you're going to be looking down and you're going to go, wait a minute, is that what deceived the nations? Is that what was causing me problems? That little bitty 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 devil. Whenever in God, this is what we look like. I said in God, not in the natural, okay? In God, this is what we look like. And this is what we're called to look like. We're called to be full of Him. And when we get the Word in us, amen, then the, 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 the stage goes the other way. We stand down here and the mouse gets up there because we put fear in its place. Well, what's going to do that? Faith in God. And that's why I'm really wanting to teach you today and whenever about how do we live by faith. 
Okay? Because fear is screaming all around us. Be afraid. Man, it's not going to work out. The world's coming to an end. Hallelujah. You're going to be, you know, living in your house in a few days. Climate control's coming. They're going to shut you down. They're going to take your money. You ain't going to have money. You ain't going to have this. Ah, yeah, 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 all this stuff. When, hey, time out. We're in the kingdom. We don't operate according to the world. Now, if you want to, well, then you can do that, but it's not profitable. And God don't want us to. Amen? We are not to live in fear, so how should we live? Let's look at how we should live in, in times like this. In Romans 1.16, it says this. It says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation. From His wrath and punishment to everyone who believes in Christ as Savior, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed, both springing from faith and leading to faith, disclosed in a way that awakens more faith. As it is written, and forever, you see that word, forever remains. The just and the upright shall do what? Live by faith. In Jesus' short time on the earth, go back and look at Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And Wednesday night we did have a service, and it was powerful. We had a good time. Our last one's this Wednesday night. But one of the things I actually shared with them was, look, why don't we open up the Gospels and begin to look through the Gospels again as followers of His? And let's really find the real Jesus. Let's see how Jesus operated, and let's begin to let that operate in our life. But one of the things you see Jesus saying over and over and over again was, according to your faith, be it unto you. Okay? According to your faith, be it unto you. This happened because of your faith. He put a lot of emphasis on your faith. And then we see Paul pick up the torch and begin to write letters that are surrounded by faith. Faith is a big deal. Hebrews eleven six 6, that it says it's impossible to please God without this, this faith. Amen? So it's a big deal. Why is it a big deal? Because if you're going to operate successfully in His kingdom, you've got to learn to do it by faith. And that's what I'm here to teach you today. Just like you put your faith in Jesus, and a lot of people don't have a problem there, but I think once we do that, we stop. We just act like everything's just going to happen. You know, it's you know, God's will. He's the one. He's big boss. You know, if it's meant to be, it'll happen. You know, no, it's not. The same God that you had to reach out to with your faith to get salvation is the same God you're going to reach out to with your faith and get everything else. Peace, joy, love, finances, anything else because the devil does what? He comes to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. Well, if you leave it all up in the hands of God, well, you know what, man, man, I guess God just didn't think I needed that anymore, so he went ahead and took it from me. Oh, wait a minute, I just read the Scripture. The devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So if there's something being stolen from you, God ain't behind it. Are you kidding me? Well, you know, he probably seen fit, but I don't need that. That's the reason why that's been removed from my life. You know, I probably didn't need that house anyway, so God just took it from me. I didn't need that car anymore, you know. I mean, I, I can walk just as good as I can drive. I didn't need it. I guess I didn't need that job. So, they, you know, he just took me away from that job. I mean, we just cover up things. And we would never act that way when it comes to the most important things like salvation. Well, you know, we just don't know why God saves some and don't save others. I guess he just is his will for some to get saved and some not. Well, if it's not just, you know, if that don't apply to salvation, it don't apply to anything. Does God wish everybody would get saved? Yeah. Absolutely, He wish everybody get saved. Well, why wouldn't the same God wish that, you know, everybody have joy? Everybody have peace? Everybody have their needs met? It's the same God, amen? He's come to give us life, to give it to us more abundantly. The enemy's come to steal from you. And we've got to rise up like the people of God and stand back and say, no, devil, you can't have it. I mean, didn't Peter tell us that we've got to resist the devil? He says if you resist the devil, he'll do what? Flee. It don't say nothing about God resisting the devil. So if you're waiting for God to get the devil out of your life, woo, you and the devil are going to be hanging out for a long time. Now again, I want to say this. Because just like when you have a little baby, okay, you have to do everything for the baby, right? You don't expect the baby to go in there and cook its meal. Hey, you know what? You're born. Get in there. You go cook your own meal. I'm tired of this. Change your own diaper. Man, what do you think I am? Your slave or something? Man, get out of here. It's time for you to take a bath. I know you're only two years old, but get in there, man. Brush your teeth too. My gosh, your breath stinks. Do we do that to a little kid? No. We do everything for the little baby. Amen? But there's going to come a time and a place when you ain't doing that no more. 
They're going to have to do some things on their own. Well, when you first get saved, we're babies in Christ. So God does hold our hand and walk us through some things. There is some things that happen in our life just because we're babies. So He's got to take care of everything spiritually. And He does for a season. But then there comes a time and place where you've got to grow up and begin to risk, resist the devil. Stand against him. Amen. Learning how to grow in faith. Hallelujah. Hebrews 10, 38 says this, Now the just shall live by faith. But if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. So how do we please God? Faith. So if we don't have faith, guess what? We're not pleasing God. Amen? Amen? His soul has no pleasure in us if we draw back from faith. We are to live by faith just like Jesus did while he was on the earth. Did you know that Jesus had to live by faith? He didn't just show up and say, hey, y'all, I got the badge. I'm the son of God. That means everything goes the way I want it to go. Because I am the Son of God. Y'all do know that, right? The. All right? Mm Mm-mm. He had to discover who his father was in the Scriptures. He had to find out who he was in the Scripture. He had to begin to get along with God. He had to choose. Did he not have things to do in life? Yeah. Did he not have a, you know, schedules and things and friends pulling at him? Oh, yeah, he did. He chose something greater. And just like we said this morning in prayer, which was an awesome, awesome time together, is that, look, I believe that 2022 is going to be a year of one word, sacrifice. Sacrifice. And are you willing to sacrifice for something greater than your plan in life? I mean, it takes a sacrifice to see God's will. Was it not a sacrifice for Jesus to go to the cross? Or did they have the red carpet rolled out? And they were all applauding him with pom-poms and, and Woo, way to go, Jesus, way to go, Jesus. Oh, you the man. Woo. No. It took a sacrifice for him to do that. We've got lost sons and daughters in this world. Amen? That we need to be focused on reaching. And it's going to take sacrifice. I believe that's what it's going to take. Amen? So, he was successful because he trusted his father in the good times and in the bad times. He trusted his father. He trusted in his father got him through some of the big, toughest times on earth. What about the death of his cousin, John the Baptist? That was his cousin. Head cop decapitated. He was born, Jesus was born six months after John the Baptist. They grew up in the same family. That's a cousin, man. Cuz got his head chopped off. That touched Jesus' heart. He had to walk through that. This was family. He ate with this guy. He played with him. He was close to John. And now John gets his head cut off. I mean, Jesus ain't a robot. He had to go through the same emotions that we go through when we lose a loved one. So he had a moment to where he did get by himself. But what did he do? Pick himself back up. I must be about my father's business. He had to keep going. He couldn't stop. And the only way he could do that was his faith in God. Not his faith in himself. Because when you walk through things like that, and some of y'all have, you can't do it on your own, baby. You can't. You cannot do it. You've got to have help. And the same one that helped Jesus get through the death of his cousin is the same one that will get us through these situations in life. Amen? Because there's something greater calling. There's something greater we got to look at. Amen? Hallelujah. Glory to God. What about the death of his friend Lazarus? The only scripture that talks about Jesus weeping was the friend Lazarus. Now again, he raised him from the dead, but still it hurt him. That leads me to believe that Maybe Jesus got the revelation that he was going to raise him from the dead after he cried. I don't know. What about the hatred of the Pharisees? Was he not hated by the Pharisees and Sadducees? Was he not judged, mocked, ridiculed, laughed at, made fun of, ridiculed? He had to go through that, guys. What about the betrayal of all his disciples? Dear God, man, I mean, his whole team left him. High and dry, baby. Out of here. Man, you did some cool things, bro. You was, you was pretty good. Man, I like what you did, that walking on water stuff. Pretty cool, man. Feeding, I mean, you're pretty cool, man. But, uh-uh. man, they're about to kill us. I'm out of here. So Jesus is standing all by himself. Betrayal of the ones that, that, that you were supposedly the closest to. Anybody ever felt betrayal? People done you wrong? Okay. He can be touched with the feelings of your infirmities. What about the pain in the Garden of Gethsemane? I mean, that was painful. He knew what he was getting ready to walk through. He could see it, and it hurt to the point to where blood was dropping out of the pores of his skin. 
What about the mocking of Herod in front of everyone? You remember when he was in front of Pilate? And Pilate said, look, we're going to send you to Herod. So he goes in there to Herod. Herod's got all his diamond rings, all his cute little girls, all his little fancy stuff. And to the world, and probably to a lot of the Jews, they probably thought, man, if I could just be like old Herod. Wow. He's got it made. I mean, he's driving the best donkey. He's got the best little palace. If I could just be like him. Oh, man, what an honor. I, man, you know what? I would help God out so much if I had all that money. Oh, if I could be like Herod. But yet Herod brings the Son of God in and mocks him. Oh, I thought we'd bring you in here and you'd perform a few miracles for me. Because that's what they do for me. I'm, I'm King Herod. I bring people in and they show me things. So Jesus didn't say a word while he was being mocked and made fun of. How about you? How do you do in that situation? How would you hold up? If they brought you in front of your company and begin to mock you, make fun of you, call you names, laugh at you, what you going to do? Jesus did it. He had to go through it because he had faith in God. What about the disowning of the people of, of Jerusalem? The whole country disowned Jesus. What about the beating by the Romans? How many of y'all think that didn't feel too hot, right? They're beating him. Innocent man, he's being beat. Okay, for doing nothing wrong. What about when he was nailed to a cross? How could he do all this? Because he had faith in God. Amen? And what about raising him back from the dead? He had faith in God. That was the whole reason he gave his life, because he knew at the end he was going to win. Sometimes me and you are going to have to sacrifice in the front end to reap something great in the back end. Amen? Because with God, it's all about harvest. That means it's going to work out for your good if you sacrifice yourself to do what God's called you to do. And God's calling us to have faith in His Word, not faith in this world. Amen? Jesus lived His life on earth with faith in God. Jesus left this earth with faith in God. Jesus is our example to live by. 1 John 2, 6 says this, Those who say they live in God should live their lives as Jesus did. Jesus said something in Luke towards the end of his life on earth. He was coming close to his departure from earth to go back to heaven. So Jesus said this in Luke 18, 8. He said, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. And he's talking about a story, that he, a, a, a parable that he actually talked about prayer and being consistent when and you're asking the Father. But then he goes on to say, Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he what? Will he really find faith on the earth? She's okay. Let her be a kid. She's a pretty kid, hallelujah. Just let her enjoy herself. You in the house of God, baby doll. God loves you, and so do we. Hallelujah. How many of y'all love kids, amen? Mm, God loves them babies. I love it, hallelujah. We're a church that loves babies. We love kids, hallelujah. Amen. Just let them be kids, hallelujah. But Jesus says something at the end of his life, talking about will he find faith on the earth when he comes? The final words of people can be some of the most powerful, important things to remember. Y'all do know that, right? That's why it's good to be around people of, of gray hair. Because they know their time's coming to an end, and sometimes they'll give you unfiltered information that can help you out. Jesus knew his time was short. He was getting ready to leave, so he's asking, hey, look, I need you guys to be in faith. He said, I believe Jesus wanted his disciples to get this and don't forget it. If it was important enough for Jesus to say it to them 2,000 years ago, then it is very important for us today. We could very well see the return of Jesus very soon. So if it was important for him to say it then, is it not important today? So let me ask the question, and I asked it toward the end of last week. I said, how are you living? How are you living? Last week we started to learn about faith and what it looks like. So let's look again at what is faith, okay? Hebrews 11.1. It says, faith is the confidence that what we hope for will actually happen. It gives us assurance about the things we cannot see. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. If you can put that up in the New King James, I want you to just leave it there because I'm getting ready to do an example, and I want you all just to see this, okay? And if I don't get nothing else done today, I want this example to be something that, that hits everybody at home, Okay? Because I'm getting ready to teach you on how you can receive from God. How many of y'all would like to know how to receive from God? Okay? I'm going to give you a picture of how you can receive from God. 
But first we need to understand what faith is. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. And that word hoped for, that word hope in the Bible is a definition with great expectation. It's not the way we would use hope today. Oh man, I hope it works out. Oh man, I hope you get, man, I hope this happens. No, 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 no. That's almost depressing, okay? The Bible hope, okay, these three remain, what is it? Faith, hope, and love. Well, you know that word hope. If it's going to be in there with faith and love, it got to have some good stuff to it, okay? He ain't put no word in there. Well, I hope so. No, nah. nah, this word hope is a great expectation that you're going to get what you're asking God for. Amen? So now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. So faith is the substance of things hoped for, and it's the evidence of things not seen. Okay? Now I'm going to give you a natural illustration. And this is all this is, is an illustration, okay? Because everybody in this room, you have a need. And that need can be different for everybody. You may need peace. You may need joy. You may need gas for your car. This all applies, okay? All in between. And this is not about you believing God to get billions and billions of dollars to where you can go live on a yacht somewhere and forget about everybody in the world. I'm not talking about that, Okay? To be honest with you, you don't even believe you would get a billion dollars. Some people that pray that, they've lost. they got some you know, marbles rolling around their head, okay? So what I want to do is, is just show you all a natural illustration. So I'm going to use my phone is, is, is the illustration, okay? This phone right here, okay? That phone, I need that phone. I need that phone, okay? Because you know the, the, the phone I had, it broke, Okay? So now I'm in need of a phone because I need it at work. And it, this is a need of mine. And God said he would do what? He would supply all of my need according to his riches and glory. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the Father, not Verizon, and get set up on their 1,500-month plan, <laughs> make forever payments to the end of time. But hey, look, you know, you, you get the updated version every two years, even though you're paying $50 a month. Woo, oh, well, congratulations, okay? No, okay? That's not what I'm talking about. That's going to Verizon to get your need met. I'm going to teach you how to go to God to get your need met. So I need the phone, okay? God knows I need the phone. And he said he would supply all of my need according to his riches and glory. So now what I'm going to do according to Hebrews 11.1, 1, I'm going to take my faith and I'm going to put it in that word that he said he'd supply all of my need according to his riches and glory. So now I've got his word. Okay, And now my faith in that word, it becomes the evidence of the thing I can't see. Y'all getting this? My faith in Philippians 4.19 gives me that hope and assurance that what I asked him for is going to come to pass. So now I may not have a physical phone, but I've got Philippians 4.19 that now is my phone. And I'm thanking God all the time. Thank you, Father God, that you said you would supply my need according to your riches and glory. I asked you, Lord, for a phone, and I believe it by faith that it is coming to me. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Father, for supplying me with a phone. Then I take Philippians 4.19, and I print it out, and I put it on my refrigerator. I put it on my mirror, and I begin to say, Father, I thank you that you will supply that phone in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, that I have that phone because your word is my title deed. It's my evidence that what I ask for is going to come to pass. Now, when I do that and release faith in that, guess what God begins to do? He begins to go to work. He begins to start talking to Katie. Or he may go talk to Pam. He may talk to Maggie and say, Hey, I need you to go over here to Verizon, buy Nathan a phone. And then I want you to take that phone and go give it to him because he needs a phone. And guess what just happened? He supplied my need. And you know how much it cost me? Zero. And I've just watched the kingdom of God bring something to me instead of the world bringing something to me. Now, this is the catch. That didn't happen as quick as it's going to happen to you go to Verizon. This is where a lot of people settle for second, not best. Because this phone might take weeks to get to me. It may not happen overnight. He never said that in his word, that when you ask me, it'll happen overnight. He just said, ask me, and have faith that I'll bring it to pass. 
So as I continue to stand on the Word of God, and I continue to thank Him, okay, and I got some homework to help you guys with this, this phone, you know how when you order something from Amazon, I know it gets there in, in 30 minutes, but typically it takes a couple days. Did you know that it, it leaves the warehouse and it makes multiple, you know what I'm saying, before it gets to you? When I put my order in from heaven, I just got to be patient. And it begins to come. And it may go all over. It may get to this person over here and they're not, they're not listening to God. They're ignoring God. So what does God have to do? He has to go over here and get this one. But He's working on my behalf. I can't see it. But that's not my job. My job is to do what the Scripture says. Have faith in God. That His Word has become my phone. Now you can put that in everything that you, anything you need. Maybe you're depressed. And you need peace. The same thing. You look in the Scripture. You find a Scripture where He said, Hey, I'm going to leave my peace with you. I want to give you my peace, okay? I will give you the peace which passes all understanding. You go to God in faith and you say, Father, I thank you that right now I'm, I'm confused. I'm in a state of confusion. Man, I, I'm really feeling depressed and I'm asking you by faith to bring me peace. According to your words, you said that you left your peace for me. You said that you would give me the peace that passes all understanding. So right now I receive that peace by faith in Jesus' name. Those scriptures become the title deed and the evidence that you have it. So now when somebody asks you, says, man, how's that? How are you working on that depression? Well, you know what, man? They're, they're, you know, it still seems to be all around, but I got confidence. I got a title deed that says something greater than this depression. That God said He would give me His peace that passes all understanding. So I'm standing in that Word by faith. And that faith in that Word will bring what you need. Amen? But if we get in a hurry and we want instant gratification... And sometimes it does happen instantly. I'm not saying God don't. But if you get married too instant, you play right into the hand of the enemy. And instead of continually trusting God, you begin to get in your car, make an appointment with some psycho, and you go down there and you talk to them for about two or three hours, and now you're worse off than when you started, but yet you have a cabinet full of prescriptions. And if you take all of this, it's going to help you get better. Am I in here all by myself? I'm not saying that doctors ain't good. I'm not saying that that would. If God leads you that direction, you do it. But I'm just saying, all we need is found in who? God. And I believe this is an element of the walk of faith or the walk of a Christian that's missing. The world does not see us trusting God. They see us doing life just like they do. We go to the banks and get loans that are ridiculous. We go here, we go there. We are basically doing exactly what the world's doing. And God is saying, look, I want you, my people, to live by faith in my promises, not by your credit score. Not by how great... Oh, man, you know what? My credit is not doing good. So, you know, what I'm going to do is I'm going to borrow some money and I'm going to pay it back because I'm going to build up my credit. Where's that in the Scripture? Where is that? You see what I'm saying? We have to be willing to look at hard truth and be able to say, look, we need to conform our life to that. It's because we want it now. There's some things you get now you don't use for six months. But you act like you need it right now. I mean, come on, people. God wants us to rise up and begin to trust Him to bring what... He wants to do that. He said He would add all these things to us. Not the world. And the sooner the church wakes up to God is your provider, not just in verbalology, okay? Not just in what you say. He literally is the God who is more than enough that will supply everything you need all the time. It just may not be on your timetable. And that's why the creditor's down there going, yeah, we got you set up. Well, my credit ain't that bad. Oh, we got a plan for you. We have a plan for you. You know, the good credit people, they get 2% interest. You ain't got good credit, so you're going to be 15 to 20%. But we can help you out. Here's some money. Go get them, dog. Pay me back in 2029. <laughs> That's called bondage. I'm telling you guys. Medicine is a blessing, and it's helped millions of people. Pharmaceutical drugs do not heal your body. 
They may touch a part of your body, but I'm telling you, pharmaceutical drugs that have chemicals in them have the potential to hurt other areas of your body. You know why? Our bodies were not made to have chemicals in them. Our bodies are made to have nutrition in them. That's why God is saying, look, I know you're going to be faced with times to where sickness and disease may come. He's a God. He knows. We live in a world that's jacked up. He just wants us to come to Him, people. And I'm encouraging you, whatever that may be, whether you need help on your job, whether you need help being a good mother or a good father or a good grandparent, whatever that may look like that you need help with, God is saying, come to me. Not Facebook. Not YouTube. Come to me. I'm the one that can help you. Quit looking for others to help you. Come to me. I've got what you need. And that's what I want you guys to get. That God has everything you need. It's just when we reach out by faith to get it, it's going to maybe take a few days to get to you. But through faith and patience, we inherit the promises. And I'm going to tell you something. Let me ask you this, guys. If this phone that I asked God for was over there, and I asked Him for it, and instead of waiting on God to bring me the phone, I said, Father, I just thank you that I receive the phone by faith in Jesus' name. Hey, sweetheart, get in the car. We're going to go down to Verizon. I believe God's leading me to Verizon. I believe He's going to lead me to the right phone. And then we run down there and we get that phone. And I'm looking at it. I'm in awe. Brand new. Triple, 3D, HD, everything. I mean, this thing's literally moving. I mean, it does it everything. Am I going to be as excited as to... Oh, man, somebody's at the door. What's going on? Oh, hey, Nathan. Hey, man, just, uh, it's, it's Bob. Uh, look, man, I, I just, you know, I was riding in the road the other day, man, I felt like the Lord impressed me to, you know, go get you this, this brand new phone. Uh, I don't know what it's for, but I just, I wanted to bless you. Let me ask you something. What's going to bring me more joy? Am I not going to get excited? Is that not going to empower me that the next time I have a need, who am I going to go to? And now I'm going to Him with greater confidence, correct? Would everybody agree? Now I've seen Him work. I gave Him opportunity and He worked. And it changed my life. So now I'm going from faith to faith. Now I go up another notch. And I continue to go up another notch. That way when something does happen that is catastrophic or it's, it's really tough, guess what? I've been building my faith all the way. That I can look at that and say, huh? You delivered me from the bear, David said. You delivered me from the lion, the devil, I mean, uh, David said. This giant? What? This ain't nothing. It's the same thing with me and you people. It's the same thing. But if we let the cares of this world, the fears of life, the worries of life continue to direct our life and get us to, 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 to operate according to them and to bow, oh my God, I don't know what I'm going to do, you'll stay in that arena. And I just read you a list of things that the Son of God had to go through. And He went through them as a man. And I'm telling you, He wants all of us to go through these things. Amen? Did y'all get that? I mean, do I mean, you see what I'm talking about? It's not about you praying and getting things that you're lusting after. That's not what we're talking about. It's about you building your faith that when the devil does come, you have confidence you have an assurance that, hey, whoa, 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 God did this for me. God did this for me. He did it. Who do you think you are in Jesus' name? You can't take me out. You rise up with a holy boldness. Amen? And many of you guys have touched that. You've sensed that happen to you when you've went through some things. You know? I mean, it seems like your mind's going crazy and then there's something rise up in you. Our faith needs to be growing daily like a seed in the ground would grow. I'm going to stop right here because Chris has reminded me that I don't have to get it all out in one service. We can come back. And you know what? And everybody needs prophets in their life. And he's a good prophet. Amen? But I sent him some pictures. So we're going to show these two pictures. And we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna wrap it up right there. But last week I talked about the acorn. Y'all remember the acorn? Come on with the acorn. Hallelujah. Can anybody tell me where the acorn is? It's the acorn. Okay? Remember what I told you guys, you know, I had the little seed, the acorn seed, and, 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 and you know, when you plant the acorn seed, uh, it don't just kind of, 
bust out of the ground in 10 seconds after I put it in the ground? That means whenever I released the seed into the ground and it was covered up, the ground didn't all of a sudden start shaking. And all of a sudden, hey, y'all stand back, guys. Here we go. Here we go. Getting ready to have an oak tree. All right. Boom! Oak tree appeared. No, that didn't happen, right? Ain't never going to happen. All right? And how I was really trying to get us to see this seed represents our faith in God's Word. That when we grab a hold of God's Word and we put it into our heart, which we're believing is good soil. This is going to germinate, okay? And it's going to bring that which we've asked God for. In this case, we place this acorn tree in the ground. What are we expecting to get? An apple tree? Are we expecting to get Carolina reapers? Are we expecting to get tomatoes? No! We're expecting to get an oak tree. Do you know how long it takes? Show the next picture there, guys. You know how long it takes to become this right here? Look at that. 30 to 40 years to become a full-grown oak tree. Now, again, it's going to age, and you're right. It could be 80 to 100 years old. They live a long, long time. But do you see that this came from one seed? Okay? Leave that up there. What I want you guys to see, that if you'll just believe God today for that one thing, and you allow God to bring it to pass, what happens is your faith begins to grow, and over time, you're going to have the faith of an oak tree. Amen. To where everybody, do you know that I could see this tree probably from miles? Definitely from hundreds of feet. I'll be able to see that tree. How many of you know that if I was just to put the acorn in the ground, and that does sprout up in about four weeks, four to six weeks, it will sprout up. But how many of you know that little bitty sprout could you see it from a distance? No. Okay? But is there something working? Yes. That means if, if, if you continue to, to water that seed and it gets the right nutrition, it's going to continue to grow like this. Okay? Same with me and you. If we'll take what I'm saying today and you'll apply it, I promise you your faith will get stronger and stronger. Because you and I are going to face things in life in the very distant future. Some people say, man, I would die for Jesus. But they ain't even living for Him. Hello? If you don't have faith to live for Him, <laughs> sweetheart, you ain't going to have faith to die for Him. Because I can tell you right now, when you got a gun in your face, and they're about to pull the trigger, and your kids and family's looking around, and your brains is about to hit that back wall, we're going to see where your faith is at. Like I said last week, there was pastors right now that are in Afghanistan that have told leaders in America, we're not leaving. We know that the end is near. We know that we could be losing our life at any moment. But he said, we're ready to meet Jesus. Many of them have already met Jesus. So I'm saying, God, give us a faith to live for. And then in that, we'll have a faith to die for. Amen? I'm just telling you guys. And it's time for the church to rise up. Our faith is being put on trial. It's being tried by the accuser himself. And if you guys do not take this thing serious and we just play church and we just look at it as something we're just going to do on a Sunday, we're not going to take this and be actively involved in our community and reaching people and trying to get them to church. Oh, man, you know, I just go to church. I feel good. I don't feel good. I go to church. It's no big deal. It's no big deal. How's that going to play off when we're talking to God one day and you have that careless attitude? Well, you know, God, you know what, man, I'm church, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm church. You know what it is, man, I'm church. I ain't going to go to church. You know what I'm saying, God? Yeah. I wonder, is that really going to be the conversation you're going to have? Church is not my idea, friend. I can serve God at home just like I can serve God here. I get up and get dressed and come to the house of the Lord because I have been instructed to by God. Amen? Just like all of His people have, okay? And I come not based on how I feel, how I look, what my week did or what it didn't do. I walk by faith, not by sight. My body don't tell me what I'm going to do. Hello. I don't check in with my body and go, hey, man, um, I wonder, uh, how do you feel today? Do you want to go to work? Hey, man, uh, you know, do you want to eat today? What do you think, man? Tell me. Give, me. give me. No. You have to tell your body what to do. How many of you guys feel like going to work every day? I don't. 
There's days I have to get up because I know if I don't, I'm going to get what? Fired. I ain't going to get a paycheck. So that money gets you up out of the bed and go to work sometimes despite how you feel. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, I'm about to speak in tongues right here. But yeah, we're going to put less importance on an eternal thing and put more importance on a temporary thing. So what you're saying is, is it's more important to get up and go get a paycheck than it is to get up and go to the house of the Lord. That's a great time for everybody to say amen. amen. Listen, I, listen, it's not to anybody. Don't look at it. Well, man, Nathan, you just say it. No, I'm not saying it to you. I'm saying it to myself, guys. I want to stay home. I want to go on vacation. I want to say, hey, look, man, I want to just take a break. I mean, I work all week, and then I study all day Saturday. I'm praying. I'm seeking God. I'm looking to Him to bring manna from heaven. I want to speak the Word of God. I'm getting in His presence. I'm worshiping God. I'm doing this all the time. You going to mean to tell me that my flesh don't whisper to me sometimes? Hey, look, time out, dog. You got a wife. You got kids. You got responsibilities. I'm just right there with y'all. But I have to say, no. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. It's no longer I that liveth, but it's Christ that lives in and through me. I gave up my right. Amen. I gave up my voice. I gave it to Jesus. I gave it all to him. And I'm going to do what he said do. Amen. And when my body don't feel like it, we're going to go anyway. Amen. Come on now. Hallelujah. Well, glory to God. So anyway, part three next week. Hallelujah. So let's all stand. And we're going to pray, and then I'm going to give you y'all's homework assignment. And then I'm going to go get my gun and shoot everything in front of me, glory to God. My first day with that gun, I better, I'm probably going to be out there all by myself. Y'all about to give me about 20 minutes to get warmed up. Then y'all come out there with me, hallelujah. But I want to pray for you guys. And then I'm going to give you a little bit of assignment that's real easy. You can do it. So, Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus, and I thank you for this word. I thank you for this message. And I just pray, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that we're going to be a people that live by faith. Not just talk it. We're going to live it. We're going to let the world see. Like, Rome, like, like when Paul came to Rome, one of the first things he said, he said, Wow, man, the world is marveling at your faith. And I thank you, Lord, that I'm in a room full of people that's making a decision today to let faith arise and let the enemies be scattered. Let fear be gone. Let distractions, compromise, excuses be gone. Our life is not our own, Father. And I pray today that in this house we, come, we become a house that is more devoted to you than ever before. We don't make reasons why we shouldn't do these things. We, make, we don't make excuses why we shouldn't. We make reasons to do them, Father. Because your way is right. And I thank you, Lord, that as we give ourselves to you and your things, you're so faithful to take care of everything in our life. Because in our serving is really our salvation in so many areas of our life. It opens the door, Father, for you to just pour out the blessings all over our life. So I pray right now in the name of Jesus, Father God, with every head bowed and every heart wide open, that Holy Spirit, you would touch each and every person here today. Fill them with your joy. Fill them with your power. And I pray and believe you, Father, that there'll nobody leave this house lost, sick, depressed. So with that being said, I want to ask you, if you do not know Jesus today, or maybe you walked away from Jesus and you want to make and renew your faith, just simply raise your hand and put it back down and we'll pray with you. Hallelujah. If you're in this room and you say, you know, Pastor, look, man, I mean, I, I've been battling, you know, bad thoughts. I've been, you know, my body's been, you know, sick. You've been hurting and I need you to pray for me. Just raise your hand and put it back down and we're just going to pray. You don't have to come up here. I'm going to pray for you where you're at. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I see those hands. Hallelujah. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, and everybody just pray with us. Father, in the name of Jesus, I lift up these precious people, Father, 
You've seen their hands. And I'm asking you, Father, in the name of Jesus, to touch their bodies, to heal them to full strength. Everything operating and functioning normal in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father. You sent your word and you healed us. By his stripes, Jesus healed us. Himself took our infirmities and bore our sickness. I thank you, Lord, that the healing power of God is working in and through these bodies in the name of Jesus. And I also pray, Father God, in the name of Jesus, for every single person in this room, that the fire of God is burning bright in their hearts. The Father, in the name of Jesus, as they leave today, they have more of a passion to read your word, spend time with you than like never before. And I thank you, Lord, that in the days ahead, that we are going to sacrificially give ourselves to you to eliminate things that need to be took away and to receive things that we need to be walking in. We believe it. We receive it. In the name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen, Amen, Amen. So with that being said, guys, I want to have you guys